new audio. Time to move on to nonlinear optics. As happens in most physics courses, there is one point in the content when you discover that all that you were taught is just a particular case. Optics is not different. All that we have covered so far in is in your optics, where the interaction of light with the medium can be described with the linear wave equation and the superposition principle that gives us the interference that we have studied. But if you increase the power of your light source, like a powerful laser, you can get phenomena that are non-linear. When light enters a medium, it induces electric dipoles and makes them dance, oscillate. These oscillating charges can be the external electrons, they can be the ions of the crystal, but the former are easier to move than the latter. For some small electric fields, the motion of these charges follow well the oscillations of the electromagnetic wave. But when the electromagnetic wave is strong, these descriptions start to separate, it starts to be an approximation, and new terms are required. The polarization of a medium due to an external electric field is usually described by P vector equal to epsilon naught chi E vector, where chi is the susceptibility of the medium, the constant characteristics of the medium, and epsilon naught is our friend, the vacuum permittivity. This susceptibility can be written as a power series expansion. Where chi 1 is larger than chi 2, and chi 2 is larger than chi 3, and so on. When the electric field is small, only the first term is important, but when the electric field is larger than this, then the second term starts to be important. So that, and so to have an idea of the orders of magnitudes of what I'm talking about, let's consider this KDP crystal with an index of refraction of 1.5. If the electric field is small, I can consider only the linear term from where I get that chi one is. The second order susceptibility of this medium is 10 to the minus 12. This means that if I want the second order term to have an effect of about 5% that of the first order term, these two terms have to be equal from where I get that the electric field is of the order of 10 to the 11 volts per meter. Is that big? Well, the radiance for that electric field is one half of epsilon naught C n e squared. Of the order of 10 to the 19 watts per square meter. About 10 quadrillion times more than the radius we get from the Sun. We can relate some nonlinear effects with what we cover recently of quantum key distribution. If you use a 405 nanometer laser of about 1 watt and shine it to a BIBO crystal, one every trillion photons interacting with the crystal will split into two 8 10 nanometer photon conserving energy. These photons will be entangled, which implies that they share some common correlation. These photons will leave the crystal at a certain angle, and you can send one photon to Alice and the other photon to Bob. Alice and Bob can measure the polarization of their photons, and from there, after sharing some partial information, generate a bit of information. 
ไม่ใส่เปรี้ยวอยู่